Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So today I'm moving some dry seasoned wood out of my garage uh, in preparation to move in some of the freshly milled beach lumber we've been cutting in, in the past few days. Now normally in winter I really wouldn't worry about moving lumber uh, into my garage uh, so soon, but we're going to get warm weather, high humidity and rain over the next few days and I just don't want to risk any mold growing on that. Uh, freshly sawn beach. Uh, I, I want to be using that wood rough sawn. I'm not going to ever plane it. So if I can avoid growing mold on it, uh, uh, that's the best thing possible. So I want to move that beach into my garage where I can control the humidity. I run a humidifier in there year round. I have it set to 55% and um, uh, that gives me really good control over over drying lumber. Now, if you've watched a lot of my videos, you know that probably 70 or 80% of the projects I do are done with green lumber. Um, and that's mainly outdoor structures, you know, barns, pole barns, carports, sheds, things like that, um, where you can use green lumber very effectively as long as you plan ahead, you know, what techniques to use with your fasteners, with your joints, and, and other things where you need to account for uh, eventual shrinkage of the wood. Um, you know, the technique for board and batten siding, that's specifically uh, evolved to work with green lumber for siding and, uh, you know, between the battens and the nail placement, that lets those boards dry and shrink without cracking. And so you can do a lot of, of good outdoor projects with green lumber, um, but there are a lot of indoor projects and then some outdoor projects where you really need dry seasoned lumber. And I'm talking about furniture, cabinetry, trim work, flooring, anything where you need to be sure of the dimensions of the lumber. You need to be sure that when you put a fastener in, it's not going to cause, you know, cracking some months later. Uh, basically, when you, you need to have that wood be stable and predictable and know what you're working with. So uh, there's a lot of reasons to to dry your, your sawmill lumber. Um, and so um, uh, this is an example. These are some pine boards I sawed uh, I guess about a year ago, and I moved those into the garage. They've been indoors uh, at uh, say 55% or lower humidity in that whole time. I just checked the, the moisture content on these boards. It's down under 10%. So these guys are about as dry as they're gonna get. They've reached a long-term equilibrium, and now I can move them out of the garage. I'm gonna store them out in my barn where I store a lot of lumber. Uh, dried and uh, uh, you know commercial and, and dried sawmill lumber and I'll be able to pull from that uh, stack um, as I need to use the lumber. So um, I'm going to focus on moving more of these boards out of the garage into the barn today um, and I uh, thought it'd be a good time to talk about some of my techniques for for storing and, and drying lumber. So stick around and we'll get started. Okay, so I always like to sticker and strap my lumber, and here's uh, here's one one stack with straps still on, and these are just really inexpensive straps you can get uh, from Amazon, and I'll I'll put a link to those below, um, and uh, you can also put weights on your stacks, but I find um, straps really help constrain vertical and sideways movement of of the stack. Uh, the straps basically transfer the weight of the entire stack from the bottom up through to the top, and so. Uh, it's almost equivalent to weights. Uh, if you want to do weights and straps, that's probably the best. I mean, you'll really constrain the, the wood from moving um, vertically and, and horizontally when you when you do that. Uh, but these are pine boards. Um, I saw these at one and an eighth inch on the mill using a custom ruler that I made, and I'll uh, give a link to those. I've done videos on those before, and I know that if I saw to one and an eighth inch thick, we generally get uh, somewhere between eight to 10, sometimes 12% shrinkage uh, with this wood. So if I saw it one and an eighth inch, it's gonna dry to give me a rough saw on uh, one inch, uh, which is uh, uh, what I got here. Um, I was really encouraged when I popped these straps loose. Uh, the lumber was pretty stable. The, the stack didn't suddenly explode or, or go sideways like you see a lot of times with commercial lumber. Um, so. That was a really good first uh, sanity check that everything dried um, uh, nice and uh, straight. So what I'm gonna work on now is getting these uh, stacks out of the garage, onto the tractor, and then I'll be moving them uh, into the barn. Uh, one thing I wanted to mention, 
if you use this technique of, of strapping, um, what you're going to find is that in the first two to four weeks, the lumber is going to dry dramatically. In fact, I, I would wager that it loses uh, most of its moisture really in the first uh, four to six weeks uh, if you store it in a low humidity environment. So uh, if you do use straps, just keep in mind during the first few weeks, you're going to want to come out here every, I'd say, four days and uh, check your straps. You're going, to, you're going to find that you're going to need to keep tightening those straps um, as you go through that period in the first uh, really four to six weeks um, as that lumber does uh, most of its drying. So uh, we're going to start moving uh, these boards out of the garage now and over into the barn. All right, so I got all that pine uh, moved into the barn over here and, and stacked up. Um, and I thought it'd be interesting to go through some numbers here. So there were, um, I basically had sawed one by eights, one by tens, and one by sixes. Uh, I got 34 one by eights, 16 one by tens, and 11 one by sixes. And then I culled uh, out of the group of boards, I culled uh, 18 that were uh, twisted or or curved a little bit too much for my taste. And so um, that would be a 23% cull rate. And I don't know how that compares uh, uh, typical. That sounds about right to me based on what I've heard uh, in the past um, and, and just what I've seen, um, you know, when I've done lumber in the past. I never really kept track of the numbers in the past, but uh, just, just offhand, you know, 20% was about right. Now, interestingly, uh, five of those one by tens were really just curved on an end. And the funny thing was when I was pulling off the stack, I could see some of the pieces that were bookend matches. And when I had stacked them, I'd flipped one uh, rings up, one rings down, and they had opposite curls on the same end of the board. So there must've been something strange going on with that tree that I didn't pick up. Um, and I think I can rescue five of those called one by tens and just really turn, turn them from eight footers into seven footers or six footers just by chopping off the curl on the end. And I do have a project coming up where I need seven foot boards, so I might be able to use those. So if I was able to use those, that'd be a 16% uh, cull rate. And so, you know, again, we're talking ballpark, uh, say 15 to 25% cull rate with bracket what we're seeing here with this uh, southern yellow pine um, one by lumber. So... I've got this uh, here in the barn. Um, the process of moving all this lumber, you know, to me speaks to an efficiency issue. Um, certainly if you're using a kiln or like me, you're putting lumber in a garage with a dehumidifier to dry, you know, you're going to have to move it in and out of that drying location. Um, uh, but that that's a lot of extra work, moving it in there, pulling it back out. And then ideally, I would have liked to just bring this straight to my next project. Um, but that's not going to happen for a while, so I'm going to have have to store it in the barn here for a couple months, and that's an extra step. So I'm handling all these boards uh, many extra times beyond what would be needed in a really productive setup. So just keep that in mind if you're setting up to do this to make money, something more than just a hobby. Think about how many times you handle these boards, how many times you got to store them, stack them, sift through them. 
you know, that's extra labor, that's extra overhead you got to think of. Um, uh, that's going to do it here from the pine stack though. Next thing I want to do is go sweep out the garage and I'm going to move some of the beach slabs in there and uh, then we'll call it a day. All right, so I got all these boards uh, stacked, stickered, and strapped, and uh, this should be good to go. I've got a fan here that I'll turn on as soon as I stop uh, filming this video, and then of course the dehumidifier will kick on <clears throat> as as needed. Uh, but we're in good shape here. Actually, I had to take two of these boards back outside and saw the uh, ends off. They're a little bit punky, and when I was initially taking them off the tractor, some frozen ants came staggering out of those boards. Figure that would be bad to put those in the garage. So uh, I went and shortened these top two by about a foot uh, from five, uh, no, six feet down to five and um, got rid of the ants. And so these are now strapped in here good and tight. Uh, one thing I wanted to make sure I touched on, you might've noticed in, in the video when I was taking them off the tractor initially, I was really careful about sleeping off the sawdust. Uh, that's not because I was trying to be neat. It's because the sawdust on the wood would promote mold growth. Uh, no matter if you're indoors or outdoors, if you've got wet sawdust stuck to the wood, it really promotes mold growth. So get rid of that sawdust. It really is the first thing you want to do before you stack your boards. And it'll help everything and, and definitely uh, help deter the mold. So I think that's going to wrap it up for today. Uh, hopefully this was interesting. You got to see me shuffle lumber around uh, different ways I store it for drying and then storage later on. It's, it's not the most efficient, but uh, it ends up working for me. So as always, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please leave them below. And thanks for watching.